Just to study, study to know what trust is, they'll violate At any moment, minorities, they don't be on it Walk on eggshells, keep it cautious, anxiety I'm feeling nauseous, ignorance is bliss Till you learn what the cost is And mores, we on the rise Look at us now, push the mission forward Make the prophet proud Noble Jew Ali, welcome to the city Fourth generation, know he walking with me, more shit Woke up, realized I was on a war ship Trading me like chattel property Trading places, playing Monopoly Authentic, can't copy me Lies, can't rock with me Truth, never sharpens me Love, despite you mocking me Peace, family Islam, what's good? It's your brother Cool. It's been a minute, but I um, uh, appreciate everyone who's continuing to show support um, to the movement, the entire movement, which is known as the Moorish movement. You know, everyone who's doing their part in pushing out the information to help everyone get themselves to where they need to be. You know what I'm saying? So we can all um, live free as Moors in our land and enjoy our vast state. All right? So that being said, <clears throat> got my little... Uh, reading glasses here like a little helmet hey guys all right so today's um video we're going to go into the religious freedom restoration act which is codified in um united states code title 42 chapter 21b all right so um i don't really need to explain too much you know as far as the religious freedom restoration act what i do want to point out to everyone is that religion when you look up the term religion in Black's Law Dictionary, it means plied with the deed of trust. So just so you understand that religion is dealing with trust, and trust is the highest form of law. Okay? So let's just, go, let's just get right into it. <clears throat> so here we go. So once again, 42, United States Code, Chapter 21B, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act. Congressional findings and declaration of purposes. The reason why this got published, right? The framers of the Constitution, recognizing free exercise of religion as an unalienable right, secured its protection in the First Amendment to the Constitution. Laws neutral toward religion may burden religious exercise as surely as laws intended to interfere with religious exercise. And what is the exercise of religion? Just so we're clear, the exercise of religion means religious exercise as defined in section 2000 CC5 of this title. Don't worry, we'll break down the definitions because they, they got a whole uh, portion in this chapter called definitions. So we'll, we'll get into that. Governments should not substantially burden religious exercise without compelling justification. Governments, the term government includes a branch, department, agency, instrumentality and official and official of the United States or of a covered entity you see right here right or other person acting under color of law okay so understand that the government that you're talking about now is the United States Corporation Company of course acting under color of law all of this is color of law, right? Codes are color of law. These are their color of law. This is what they have to live up to. When I say they, I mean the agents of the United States. <clears throat> so let's keep on going. Four, in Employment Division versus Smith, 494 U.S. 872, the Supreme Court virtually eliminated the requirement that the government justify burdens on religious exercise imposed by laws neutral toward religion. And... Five, the compelling interest test as set forth in prior federal court rulings is a workable test of striking sensible balances between religious liberty and competing prior governmental interests. Purposes. The purpose of this chapter are 
to restore the compelling interest test as set forth in Sherbert versus Verner and Wisconsin versus Yoder, and to guarantee its application in all cases where free exercise of religion is substantially burdened, and to provide a claim or defense to persons whose religious exercise is substantially burdened by government. Let's see what persons mean real quick. As used in this subsection, the term person means the political subdivision of any state or combination or group thereof, or any person, corporation, association, or other entity of any nature whatsoever, including instrumentalities of states and political subdivisions. Ain't saying nothing about human uh, 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 sentient beings, huh? So we already know. This is why I tell you that religion is plied with deed of trust because the person that they're applying the religion to is a corporation, association, and an entity, not a flesh and blood living, breathing being. So the religion, which is the trust, is protecting that entity. Okay? Let's keep on going. So let's go back here. Go to the next. Now this is a uh, 2000 BB-1. Free exercise of religion protected. A. Government shall not substantially burden a person's exercise of religion, even if the burden results from a rule of general applicability, except as provided in subsection B. Except government may substantially burden a person's exercise of religion only if it demonstrates that application of the burden to the person. So just so y'all know, what that is saying in itself is the only way government can burden your person's um, free exercise of religion is if it looks like that religion in itself is placing a burden on that person. Meaning, if your entity or your structure or your institution looks like it's faking being a religious organization, that it's faking its mission, that it has ulterior motives at hand, that's what that is saying. That is the only time government can can imply a burden on your religion. If it looked like it's the, the very religion you're trying to imply to protect you is placing a burden on you. And the only time your religion or anything that you do for yourself can place a burden on you is if you're forcing it. Is if it's not something you really want. You're faking it. Okay? That's the only time government can place burden on the exiles of religion. When you're faking it. Now, let's keep on going. One, is in furtherance of a compelling governmental interest. And two, is the least restrictive means of furthering that compelling governmental interest. Okay? Judicial relief. A person whose religious exercise has been burdened in violation of this section may assert that violation as a claim. Listen, listen, y'all. For everyone who has an issue, for everyone who has an issue. Dedicate your birth certificate. Any issues you have, because dealing with the courts is a corporation, and dealing with the Religious Freedom Restoration Act is what protects um, the acts and movements of your entity and the people that are underneath that entity or are a part of it. All right, so essentially what I'm trying to say is if you have any issues in court, you want to use this document as a claim or a defense. 42 U.S.C. Code 2000 BB-1, subsection C, judicial relief. A person whose religious exercise has been burdened in violation of this section may assert that violation as a claim or defense in a judicial proceeding and obtain appropriate relief against a government. Standing to assert a claim or defense under this section shall be governed by the general rules of standing under Article 3 of the Constitution. Once again, it comes right back to consular courts. If y'all didn't know, Article 3 is dealing with um, diversity of citizenship. This is where consular courts comes into play. And a consular is simply put a representative or delegate from a sovereign country or a sovereign um, 
body politic or a sovereign people or a foreign state or a religious society or a religious trust or a church or a temple you see I'm, I'm just saying the same thing in very in different ways okay so in order to properly secure yourself I'm telling y'all authenticate that birth certificate and utilize the Religious Freedom Restoration Act let those two things be a compact and I'm talking about for court issues but once again like it states the only time the state can place a burden on your religious exercise is if it looks like it's placing a burden on you. So you better be real about this. Because if you're faking it, then you are um, pretty much at the mercy of the law. And you're going to have to take that right to the chest. All right? But if we're talking about putting things... So how many people are dealing with um, CPS issues in court? Uh, 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 um... um foster care, family court, you know, all these things that are manipulating this, manipulating us, you know, to get our energies, to extract our energies while breaking up our families at the same time. How many people need judicial relief? You need to understand what your religion is. Your religion is what you make it. Okay? Your religion is what you make it. And if your religion is what you make it, everything and anything you do is based on religion. Me, me breathing right now, inhaling and exhaling, is religious. My heart beating, boom, 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 boom. That's religious. The way that I study to, you know what I'm saying, um, find out as much information about myself so I can be a better me in, on, on this plane, that's religious. Me wanting to pass down the information down to my children so they can pass it down on to their children, so they can pass it down on to their children. So they could pass it down onto their children. So they never have to be in a slave position. That's religious. To continue the um, the culture of our ancestors that can be recognized from millions of years ago on this on this planet. Millions of years ago. And we're still upkeeping with those same traditions and customs today. That's religious. Those are things that are sacred. All right, we're not just talking about going to a building, praising God, worshiping Jesus, Allah, Buddha, or any of these people in any or, or, or going into the uh, a Quran, the Bible. We're not talking about any of these things. We're talking about trust. Trust law, okay? And trust law, aka religion, puts you into Article 3. If you use this documentation, it's not only a statute, it's an actual act. If you pull up the, if you download the act itself, the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, you can use the act in itself. If I were you, I would download the whole act and then just attach that as an exhibit. The whole act in its entirety. Okay? Because this is what this um, United States Code is. It's the act broken down and codified. But the same thing that is stating here for judicial relief is in the, is in the Religious Freedom Restoration Act if you read it. All right. I'm just showing you different avenues. And mind you, Morris is just sharing information with me. So Islam to that on Brother Ra. Appreciate you, Brother Ra, for the information. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just sharing it with you. And these are things that we might not be aware of, but these are different things that we can utilize to protect ourselves. Especially when we're representing ourselves. Well, especially when we're presenting ourselves. Let me not say that. Especially when we're presenting ourselves as being indigenous peoples and being in alignment with the ancient tra traditions and customs of our ancestors. That's religion. Without someone trying to control how I think or how I do things, you know, or, or, or someone trying to control um, how I think about myself as far as being a God. That's not what that's talking about when we're talking about religion as far as law goes. All right? So, remember here, Anything, anything in, uh, as far as dealing with these courts, remember, the court is a federal corporation, according to the rules of federal procedure. Uh, what was that? Title, I believe it's 15, no, Title 28, 3002, 15, subsection, blah, 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 I forgot. But pretty much it's stating that the United States is a federal corporation. 
All right. So that means the courts are dealing with federal corporations. This is why I say authenticate the birth certificate, because the courts is dealing with your estate and your estate is a corporation. But your estate means that you are the grantor or the owner of that corporation because that corporation has has origins in you. It was created based off of you. OK, so this is why if you do not claim dominion over your estate, then it can be used against you. So do you see how not claiming your estate is the worst thing you can do? Because it is the greatest weapon that is being used against you. Everyone that goes to court is going to court and, and their estate is being charged. Not them as a human being. Them as a human being, the body is being used as the insurance policy. But they themselves are not being charged. Your estate is being charged. And because you have failed to reclaim dominion over your estate, in their records, you're still deemed as a mi minority, not a majority. And that's whether you walk in there with a fez or a turban. All right? So understand what I'm saying. It's based on business and it's based on religion. That's what the republics are based off of. If you read the Northwest Ordinance, the republics are based off of religion and contracts, agreements. Okay? Once you have these two things in place, religion and business, religion and commerce, this is how we need to function. Religion and commerce, because that is the building blocks of every republic. Read the Northwest Ordinance of 1787, please. And you'll see exactly what I'm saying. So if the building block of every republic is based on religious liberty and um, civil liberty, civil dealing with contracts, that means the ability to have to make agreements, right? And the ability to, or do commerce, and the ability to have your way of life respected. So commerce and religion. Well, let me switch that. Religion, commerce. We need to have these two things in place. The commerce, y'all know what y'all need to do. I've said it a million times throughout the video. Y'all know what y'all need to do. A, B, C time. But y'all don't hear me, though. Our indigenous societies, our um, states are du jour. The United States of America and everything dealing outside of our own indigenous communities are commercial. They're all about doing business. They're all about doing trade. What are you about? Because you used to be about doing business. You used to be about doing trade. And that's why we got treaties in place. Treaties, which are agreements of amity and commerce. Amity, friendship, peace, we cool. I respect you, you respect me, amity, commerce. Now let's handle business. I respect your way of life, you respect my way of life, now let's handle some business. You see how that works? But see, if I say, yo, I my way of life is um, I worship Allah. My way of life is I worship Jesus. My way of life is I worship this. My way of life is I don't worship anybody. Let's do commerce. That's what the that's what the constitution, the foundation of it is. If it is any republic, the republican form of government, that is the foundation that we can respect each other's way of life, each other's culture, and still take care of business. We can still make money together. We can still build together. That's what the republic is. It's giving me goosebumps just saying it like that. But that's what the republic is. All right. So attach this for judicial relief. Anything and everything you do is based on religion, right? That means you raising your children, maintaining your family, expressing your culture. All these things are based on your religion. So you better protect your religion, y'all. Because there's been laws set in place since time immemorial to protect our religion. So we need to start, we need to get the ball rolling, essentially. But we're going to keep going. On to the next section. Here we go. Initiatives. Ah. The term government includes a branch, department, agency, instrumentality, and official or other person acting under color of law of the United States or of a covered entity. And what is covered entity? The term covered entity means the District of Columbia, the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, and each territory and possession of the United States. 
Uh, the term covered entity means the District of Columbia, the Commonwealth of Puerto Rico, and each territory possession of the United States. I didn't realize I had it right there after me. No. The term demonstrates means meets the burden of going forward with the evidence and of the persuasion. So demonstrate means meet the burden of going forward with the evidence and of persuasion and. So if we understand now the burden is dealing with evidence and persuasion, right? That means I got to persuade. Do I got to persuade somebody that I'm more? Do I have to persuade you or convince you that I'm a more? No, I don't. Because the burden of proof is not on me if you're claiming I'm not. However, if my religious freedoms are to be respected and protected, then I should be able to stand and affirm and show and prove why my religious rights are affirmed and protected and how they're affirmed and protected. You see? So if I can't go forward and show and prove, then I'm not worth protecting. That's why you have to be competent. So if someone were to challenge me, don't think I can't show and prove who I am. I certainly can. I most certainly can. However, I also know that the burden of proof is not on me if I make a claim. I mean, if I make a claim, the burden of proof will be on me. But if someone is making a claim against me, the burden of proof is not on me to prove the claim. The burden of proof is on you. If you say, yo, prove you or more, then I'm going to look at you like, all right, go ahead. I'm waiting for you to prove it. No, 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 G. I ask you to prove. No, 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 G. If you're saying that I'm not who I say I am, then you have to prove that I am not who I say I am. Because I'm already telling you who I am. There ain't nothing to prove. Do you understand? Understand, overstand? There ain't nothing for me to prove. So you got to prove it because you're the one that's saying that I am not what I say I am. This is how it works. So if, now let's say you get to the point, they say, yo, all right, boom, here you go. Prove it, show it. And then you start bumbling and fumbling. Well, you know, according to the, and you start pulling out documents that you got to start. Well, according to the treaty of seven, uh, July 13th, 1780. They're going to take you for a joke. That's when that's that's when it starts looking like the burden of the religion, like the religion is actually placing a burden on you because you're struggling to explain yourself. You're struggling to present yourself. That's what they mean. If it looks like you're struggling to just speak who you are and just be yourself, then that means you're faking it. That means the religion, that religion right there is placing a burden on you because it doesn't seem like you're relaxed. It don't seem like you're calm that you can just speak freely and just be and just present as you are it seems like you got to do a lot of engineering work it's not flowing that's all that means so that means be yourself if being yourself is placing a burden on you that means according to someone's perspective you're faking because being being yourself naturally is not hard it's easy right so let's continue the term exercise of religion means religious exercise as defined in section 20, 2000 CC 5 of this, of this title. Applicability. In general, this chapter applies to all. Hold on. Let me just type it. All. This chapter applies to all federal law and the implementation of that law, whether statutory, or otherwise, and whether adopted before or after November 16, 1993. I'm going to read that one more time. Yo, so what does the Religious Freedom Restoration Act apply to? What does it apply to? This chapter applies to all. All federal law and the implementation of that law, whether statutory or otherwise, and whether adopted before or after November 16, 1993. I hope that answers your question. That means it's a full range. Full range. It applies to anything and everything. Rule of construction. Federal statutory law adopted after November 16, 1993 is subject to this chapter unless such law explicitly excludes such application by reference to this chapter. I'm going to say it one more time. 
federal statutory law adopted after November 16, 1993, is subject to this chapter. Unless such law explicitly excludes such application by reference to the chapter. I haven't seen any uh, laws or codes or policies where they're explicitly excluding your right to be protected. I mean, you're um, excluding the right to your religious freedom and protection. I've never seen a code or anything pass like that. So if you've seen one, let me know. I've never seen one pass like that around here where they're specifically saying, your religion is bullshit. And I've never seen a law or, or code or anything like that pass. C, religious, religious belief unaffected. Nothing in this chapter shall be construed to authorize any government to burden any religious belief. Any, any religious belief, any. This is getting good, ain't it? Let's continue. Establishment clause unaffected. Nothing in this chapter shall be construed to affect, interpret, or in any way address that portion of the First Amendment prohibiting laws respecting the establishment of religion referred to in this section as the Establishment Clause, granting government funding, benefits, or exemptions to the extent permissible under the Establishment Clause shall not constitute a violation of this chapter. As used in this section, the term granting used with respect to government funding, benefits, or exemptions does not include, does not include the denial of government funding, benefits, or exemptions. So who said that religious organizations can't get government funding? Who told y'all that? Because see, if a government entity were to tell you that they're not going to give you funding because you're a religious organization, but, but wait, I just thought that, see, look, nothing in this chapter shall be construed to affect, interpret, or in any way address the portion of the First Amendment. Prohibiting laws, prohibiting laws respecting the establishment of religion. Prohibiting laws. So that means no government agency can say, we're not going to give you a grant because you're a religious organization. That would be discrimination based on your religious creed. Which would go against the First Amendment. So it's that simple, y'all. So once y'all keep it like that, then there's nothing more you need to do. All right? So on that note, I'll wrap that up. And we'll take it from there next time. Freedom, justice, study, study to know what trust is, they'll violate At any moment, minorities, they don't be on it Walk on eggshells, keep it cautious, anxiety I'm feeling nauseous, ignorance is bliss Till you learn what the cost is Said Moors, we on the rise Look at us now, push the mission forward Make the prophet proud Noble Jew Ali, welcome to the city Fourth generation, know he walking with me, more shit Woke up, realized I was on a war ship Trading me like chattel property Trading places, playing Monopoly Authentic, can't copy me Lies, can't rock with me Truth, ever sharpens me Love, despite you mocking me